Hey guys, so first of all, don't mind my crazy ass hair. Um, I spiked it up yesterday and now it's all like I messed up. So I'm going to do a round 3 preview of Vegas versus Nashville. Game 7 was yesterday with um, Nashville, or sorry, Vegas and Winnipeg. Um, yesterday was Game 7 against like the Jets and the Predators was Game 7 in Nashville. Winnipeg was able to pull out easily with a 5-1 win, so they take the series and they move on to the Western Conference Final to take on the Vegas Golden Knights. So, let's get into it. So first I'm going to go with ch through round two. Um, so game one in Vegas, um, it was a 7-0 Vegas win for the Golden Knights. Yeah, it, it was a 7-0 Vegas win in game one, so that was pretty convincing, you know. Like, v Vegas only had seven goals in the first round alone, and then they have seven goals in the second round in, in the first game alone. So they allowed the series 1-0. Game game two also in Vegas they ended up losing the the, the Knights four three in double overtime to the San Jose Sharks obviously the San Jose won four to three to tie the series at one one in San Jose Vegas was able to I think they had a three one lead and then they blew it yeah and then they were able to win four three in overtime to take a two one series lead then San Jose. <clears throat> then in game four San Jose retaliated with a shutout win a four nothing win. To make it a 2-2 series. Then going back to Vegas, Vegas had a 4-0 lead in the third period, and then San Jose made it 4-3, so they almost came back. But Vegas then ended up winning 5-3 to take a 3-2 series lead, heading back to game six in San Jose. So game six comes along and Vegas shuts out the Sharks at home. A 3-0 victory in San Jose to make it a 4-2 series win for that. So Vegas goes for 22 goals compared to the seven in the first round, so that's a lot more. And then gold goals against 14. Um, moving on to the goal scores. Um, so Co Cody or no sorry, uh, Jonathan Mar Marcheseau leads. Why is this so late? John Jonathan Marsh Marcheseau leads with four goals, and then Alex Tuker touch and William Carlson with three. Cody Eakin, Eric Halla. <clears throat> Colin Miller, James Neal, Nate Schmidt, all with two goals, and then Riley Smith and Shea Theodore with one goal. And then for round two for Winnipeg, game one in Nashville was was a 4-1 to one win for the Jets to take a 1-0 series lead. Game two, uh, Winnipeg was almost able to win that one too, but they, they fell in overtime, I think in double overtime actually, so I have to change that to 2 OT. So they lost in double overtime to the Nashville Predators, and that was a 5-4 loss to tie the, either the series at 1-1 going back to Winnipeg. So game three in Winnipeg, Nashville had a 3-0 lead, and I was like, it's over, 2-1 Nashville, that's it. Pfft. Nope, not so fast. They tied, they, the, the Jets were down 3-0 after one, up 4-3 after two, and then they were able, able to win 7-4, I think with the last two or one goal. The sixth or seventh goal was an empty netter. I think, and, then, and that was the win for Winnipeg to make it a 2-1 series lead for them. Then game four in Nashville, uh, Winnipeg's only goal was like in the last minute of the period, of the third period, and then the Jets ended up falling 2-1 to tie the series at 2. Back in Nashville, the Jets, a very convincing 6-2 win over the Jet or over the Predators. Like, it seemed pretty e e easy for them, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't get it. It seems so easy for them to win in Nashville this series, and I'll get to that. So 6-2, the, the Jets win, and they have a chance to take... They have a 3-2 series lead, and they have a chance to end it at home in Winnipeg. Do they? Nope. They get shut out. 4 nothing at home. And I was like, oh, shoot. Because I know that <clears throat> Rene Pecorine always has, like, a, a, a good bounce-back game, and he, he allowed no goals, so that's definitely a, a, a good bounce-back. So... A six to, or a four nothing win to tie the series at three to force the game seven in Nashville, and that game was yesterday where the Jets won five to one to take the four three series win. I was shocked, in all honesty, I was pr pretty shocked. I was like, "What the fuck? How the hell did that happen?" I was of, of course happy. I was like, because I was out. Because, like you'll see, my vlog is probably up by now. Um, that I was hanging out and I didn't get back to like night time, so I missed a, a, a bunch of the game. I came back during the third. Like right when the third started, I, I I watched the third period. So the Jets ended up winning five five to one to take a four three series win. The Winnipeg goals four just in the series twenty seven goals. How is that even possible? Like, am I doing the math right? Four plus. I don't know, but apparently twenty twenty seven goals. I don't I, I don't think so, but whatever twenty seven goals apparently, and then it goes against nineteen. 
So, and then Winnipeg has three wins in Nashville, five, one, four, one, six, two, and they've won three or four in Nashville, and they were and they lost in double overtime, five, four. So they almost could have gone a four and zero, and then just won the series in Nashville, just like that. Like I was, I, I, I was astonished. I was like, okay, so basically the road team is pretty dominant. You know what I mean? Like the only home team that really won was, I think Nashville. Game two and three was the only time the home team won. Yep, the home team only won twice in, in this series. At games two, 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 and three. That's it. So now the goal scores for the Jets. Mar Mar Mark Scheifele leads with seven goals in this series. Paul Stastny with five. And Dustin Bufflin with four. Brandon Tanev with two. Blake Wheeler, Ky Kyle Connor with two. Yeah. And Ma Matthew Perot, Tyler Myers, Jacob Chuba, and Patrick Laine with one goal each. So how do we get here? So in one corner we have the Winnipeg Jets, a team whose promise you could see coming for a few years but frustratingly never broke through. <clears throat> in their first playoff appearance since coming to Manitoba, they were swept aside by the more experienced Anaheim Ducks. I remember that. That was so bullshit. <laughs> like, I was so angry. I was like, bro. <clears throat> um, and regressed the year after. After last year's goaltending problems and that Steve Mason was the only player added to that position in the offseason, it, it was starting to become a wonder if this team would ever figure it out. And then almost overnight, they became one of the best and more well-rounded teams in the NHL. Connor Hellebuck shocked everyone by not just so solidifying the concerns in that, but, but by playing so well, he earned a spot as a Vezina Trophy finalist. Blake Wheeler morphed into one of the best captains and forwards and power, power forwards in the game today. Mark Scheifele continued his traje trajectory to super star dorm. Dorm? Yeah. Patrick Laine and Nick Ehlers are huge threats, and if this team didn't have enough weapons already up front, a rookie Kyle Connor scored 31. And we haven't even gotten to the defense yet. A mix of big and small, strong and slippery, offensive and defensive minded. Because of everything else about this team, it's been one of the more, it's been one of the more underrated blue lines in, in the league no more. And the Vegas Golden Knights are, are, are this unfathomable collection of misfits and cast-offs that everyone has been waiting to drop off since they won their first game 2-1 in Dallas, but it never happened. The wire-to-wire -wire leaders of the Pacific Division have been Exhibit A, that speed is the greatest equalizer, great equalizer in the NHL today, and if you have plenty of that, and maybe a chip on your shoulder as well, anything is possible. <clears throat> from, from William Carlson's 43-goal season to Derek Anglin's responsible minutes, and leadership to the collection of four goalies. Sorry, I'm just looking because I keep going this way. Um, to the collection of the four goalies who had to fill in for an injured Mark Andre Fleury early early this season, Vegas could do no wrong. Long ago, we're talking to f we're talking February. They became the best expansion team in North American pro sports history, and it's crazy they're now just four wins away from winning the Stanley Cup in one in year one. Four wins. Eight wins. Eight wins. Um, the city has embraced the game and the team. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, four wins away from the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, the city has embraced this, the, the game and the team, and why not? The Golden Knights aren't only a Cinderella story. They're an incredible, exciting team to watch. But write them off at your own peril. So basically, like, like write them off at, at your own, like, whatevers. So advanced stats, 5-on-5. Five five. The Winnipeg is 51 point. Hold on. Jesus Christ. What the heck? Okay. So for some reason... Okay, whatever. So Winnipeg, 51.5 CF percent, which is 10th. A 54.72 goals for, which is 3rd. A 9.25 save percentage, which is 11th. An 8.53 shorthanded percentage, which is 5th. And then a 101.07 PDO, which is 7th. And then for Vegas, it's telling me their penalty kill and power play, which I don't know why it's telling me that. Sorry, hold on. Okay, so for some reason, it's not really telling me, so I'm just going to do what it says. So a 21.4% on the power, power play, which is 11th. An 81.4% pen penalty kill, which is 12th. 268 goals for 5th, and then 225 goals allowed. And I'm going to get to that more in for like Winnipeg, so I don't know why I didn't tell me whatever the fuck. So team for all offense, Vegas is 5.21, which is 16th. Winnipeg is 6.00, which is 9th. My furnace is turning on, don't mind that. 
Uh, the defense for Vegas is 5.61, which is 11th. And then for Winnipeg, it's 6.02, which is 6th. The power number for Vegas is 5.41, is which is 12th. For Winnipeg, it's 6.01, which is 7th. So now moving on to the team stats. So Winnipeg is 23.4% on the power play, which is 5th. 81.8% on the penalty kill, which is 9th. 273 goals for, which is second, and 216 goals allowed, which is fifth. So they have actually better numbers than Vegas. Their head to head record the Winnipeg is 1 1 and 1 against Vegas, and Vegas is 2 1 and 0 oh against Winnipeg. So moving on to the playoff strengths. So for Winnipeg, there hasn't really been a weakness to exploit on this Jets team so far. Certainly, Halibut's goaltending has been an important factor in getting the Jets this far. And the, and the pickup of Paul Statsny at the deadline fully formed a dangerous forward unit. A focus always goes back to the top line led by Shifley. Three years ago, Shifley registered just one assist in the four-game sweep by the Ducks, but he's grown so much as a player since then. Now one of the top centers in the, in the game, Shifley has been a regular season monster for two years now and it isn't shriveling on the biggest stage. <clears throat> the leading scorer on the Jets and a true student of the game, Shifley, oh my god, people are staring this group chat, I'm trying to do a video. The leading scorer on the Jets and a true student of the game, stop spamming, the, 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 oh my god, I'm gonna kill this bitch. I'm muting it, it's not being muted. The leading scorer on the Jets and a true student of the game, Shifley ex especially shown against Nashville, especially on the road in loud Bridgestone Arena, torching the Predators with seven goals away from home. Much has been made all year about Vegas' home ice advantage, but with Shifley, the Jets are s setting out to put that to bed. The playoff strengths for Vegas, speed, speed, speed. The Golden Knights are here because, sure, some of their players ha are having career years, Carlson, but also because GM George McPhee and his staff did a great job finding value and skill where other GMs didn't. The top line of, of Jonathan Marshall, Riley Smith, and Carlson has been nearly unstoppable and could very well be the best trio left standing. They are the top three scorers of the Golden Knights this postseason, and coach Gerard, Gerard Gallant does not sh shy away from playing them against the, oppo the opposition's best. But not enough can be said about Flurry, whose 951 save percentage, 1.53 goals allowed, and four shutouts are easily better than any of the three goaltenders still around. It, it was a foregone conclusion that he was the goalie Pittsburgh would let go of in the expansion draft last summer, but today some Pens fans are wonder if that call should have been so easy. Early in his career, there was a question if Flurry was a big time goalie, as he's but as he's added age and experience. He's proven to be just that. This playoff journey may be the best run of the multi-cup winner's career, and if Vegas does the unthinkable and wins it all, he right now would be the favorite to win the Conn Smythe. Incre incredible. Now moving on to the X-Factor. So Winnipeg's X-Factor. We'd bet on this being an exciting back-and-forth high-paced series, which means the goalies will, uh, will be front and center. And most of Winnipeg's offensive stars have shown up through, the, through two rounds, but while Line A certainly hasn't been invisible, he's not scoring at the rate we're used to. He's put 40 shots on at these playoffs, but has just three goals to show for it, and a 7.5 shooting percentage that is well behind his career average of 18. It's just a matter of time before he gets going, and if he does it against Vegas, the results could be de uh, devastating for the, Ve for, for the Golden Knights. Vegas' X-Factor, while Vegas' strength is in its speed and transition game, and of course flurry, that means its game's turn, its game's turn into track meets often. And to, to, to this point, that hasn't been a problem, and Flurry has been stellar. But the Golden Knights' average of 34.4 shots against per game these playoffs is more than three shots higher than any of the semifinalists. Now, if Flurry continues to play this well, all bets are off. But allowing the Jets that many opportunities in a seven-game series could spell trouble. In the two wins Vegas earned against Winnipeg this year, the Golden Knights held them to under 30 shots. Vegas isn't going to change its plan of attack now, and it's getting red, and it's getting really difficult to underrate these guys. While a run and gun series against the Jets would make for some excellent watching, it might not be the way to topple the whiteout. So now the playoff team leaders, goals and assists points. For Winnipeg, Mark Shifley leads with 11 goals, 5 assists, 16 points. Blake Wheeler, 3 goals, 12 assists, 15 points. And Paul Stastny, 6 goals, 8 assists, 14 points. Now for Vegas, Jonathan Marcheseau, 4 goals, 7 assists, 11 points. Riley Smith, 1 goal, 10 assists, 11 points. And William Carlson, 4 goals, 6 assists, 10 points. So now going on to my prediction. This is a really tough series to predict, to be honest. 
Like, I don't even know how many games. Like, I, I don't know how many games, but I, I will say Vegas will win this series. Why do I say this? Because Vegas is really good at home and away. I don't know how many wins they have. I believe they're eight and two. And if I check that out right now, I will check that for you right now. I'll check their playoff records so far. But it's hard for me to say because yes, Winnipeg does have home ice in this series, by, by the way. So game one is gonna be tomorrow at 8 p.m., I believe. Let me just check that. It's gonna be at 7 p.m. tomorrow in Winnipeg for game one. So it's gonna be on a Saturday. And I really hope that the Jets can you know, have, win at least one at home. Because going back to Vegas, it's not gonna be easy whatsoever. But, but then again, I thought they all the same thing. I, I thought Nashville would win this series in six or seven, and Winnipeg won in seven. So what does that show to me? It shows that the Jets are for real, and they're in the top four now, and they're looking to win this whole thing. The remaining four teams are the, the Washington Capitals, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Golden Knights, and the, and the Jets, which is actually a really weird duo, or a really weird four like, teams that I never would have expected. Like Chicago didn't even make the playoffs. I would have expected them here. Pittsburgh just got out by Washington, so that's kind of shocking. I'll be honest, the Golden Knights I did expect. Jets, not really. Um, the Capitals, no. The Lightning, not really. So a few teams I didn't expect are here. So, but yeah, let me go to their record. Sorry. Um, Winnipeg's playoff record ends at, so far, 8-4. and four. So that's not a, not a bad record whatsoever. But by the way, rest is also going to be something big because Vegas won in six games and Winnipeg won in seven. So that puts, you know, that gives Vegas some more rest, a few more days rest, because their series was finished on, I believe, May 6th. So that was like five days ago, so they've had some rest. The Golden Knights are eight and two, while the things are eight and four, yeah. And the Jets are eight and four, while Vegas is eight and two. So they have the better playoff record so far, same amount of wins, but less losses than, yeah. But, so again, I don't know if it'll be much of an, an advantage for Winnipeg because, like, I feel like, I think it will make a good difference for Winnipeg having home ice because then playing in Vegas is going to be a, awful because Vegas is just playing in Vegas, right? Like, I did predict Vegas in in the first round to win this whole cup because I was like, they're, they're way too good. My, my friend said Vegas out in the first round. They got, they, they, they do a sweep. And in the second round, he was like, oh, okay, yeah, Vegas in six. And then he's right. So I don't know what his prediction is now, but, like, my, my prediction will be Vegas, and it's hard to say how many games because, like, I don't know if Vegas is going to be dominant. I don't know how dominant Winnipeg is going to be. I did not expect the series that I got between Winnipeg and Nashville. Like, I, I, I didn't expect Winnipeg to do that, so I don't know. I'm going to say it'll go six or seven games because this is a tight series. Um, it should be a really fun one, and, ho and hopefully I'm wrong in Vegas winning the Cup because I do want uh, Winnipeg to make the Stanley Cup Finals which would be amazing, and then they would e either play Tampa Bay or Washington, which would be tough, but I don't, I feel like Vegas is better, I feel, I feel like Vegas is the best team in the league so far. Like, and definitely out of the four, I feel like Vegas is, is the best so far. So it sucks that the Jets have to play them, but eventually you have to beat the best to be the best. So let's hope that the Jets can win, but I will say Vegas in this series. Hopefully when I do the Stanley Cup final in a preview, it's gonna be Winnipeg versus Tampa or something, I don't know, we'll see. But I hope you guys like this preview. Tell me in the comments what you guys think. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications if you haven't.